How can we expect people to get an electric car if there is inadequate charging infrastructure? It doesn't happen very often on this channel, but I think it's time for a little rant. I'm in my leaf, trusty old leaf, and I'm rapid charging in Canterbury. Now Canterbury, you'd think it's quite a well-known city, right? Um, you would think we've got a fantastic provision of rapid chargers, wouldn't you? Uh, but we don't. We have one rapid charger. Just one. And that's one at Morrison's, a supermarket called Morrison's, and it's a Genie Point charger. This is the only rapid charger we've got in Canterbury, open to the public. We have a few other rapid chargers dotted around, but they're for taxis only. I mean, that's great that the council are forward thinking enough in that respect to actually put them in for taxis. And I have seen one electric, full electric taxi recently, so that's great. But um, yeah, it's no good if a member of the public needs to charge somewhere. We've got loads of destination chargers, loads of AC chargers in like uh, the train station car park and other car parks, but no other rapid chargers other than this one Genie Point unit. And Genie Point Anyone that uses Genie Point chargers will be able to tell you that they're not the most reliable network on Earth. In fact, if you look at ZapMap, you'll see that far too many broken ones are Genie Point or BP Pulse. Genie Point, bless them, they've got loads of they've got chargers everywhere. Um, they've got a deal with Morrison, so it's really good. And I don't want to complain too much because it is the only charger here. But I rocked up to this charger and it took three goes to get it going. Firstly, I tried with an app called Bonnet. That didn't work and then I tried with the Genie Point app and that didn't work twice or something and then I got it going eventually. So that's faffing around that I shouldn't have to do for a start. Secondly, often when I come here and I did a video similar to this and I never bothered ed editing it in the winter, I came here and I saw that there was a Zoe using it. At first I thought, oh that's great, it's a Zoe, it's a, maybe it's an old one and it's using AC because you've got Chadamo CCS and you've got the AC socket and the old Zoe's just use AC, so I thought, great, if it's using AC, I can actually still use Chadamo. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case. This is one of the newer Zoe's and it's using the uh, CCS plug. And I can't use Chadamo at the same time as CCS. So um, I thought, well, okay, well, I'll go to one of the taxi only chargers. And amazingly, there was actually a taxi that just pulled in just as I was about to use it. So obviously, I wasn't going to charge there if there was actually a taxi going to use it. It was um, a plug in hybrid, actually. So, um, not full EV, but anyway, it's fine. Of course, they're entitled to use it because it's a taxi. So I've just come back here and I'm just waiting. Kind of wasting time, really, isn't it? It's just a complete waste of time. It's absolutely ridiculous in this day and age that the only charger is this one in Canterbury. And this is a problem in cities all over the country, right? And probably all over the world. It's just odd that sometimes the provision of chargers is so bad in a rich city like Canterbury where we have loads of electric car drivers. I mean, I see so many EVs all over the place and we just have the one charger. You could argue, well, it's not the council's fault, but I think it is partly the council's fault. And I'll tell you why in a second. And often I, I come here and it's busy. So it's a really busy charger because there's only one of them. So we need more chargers. There are networks uh, like Instavolt and Osprey. They're really good and they've got loads of deals with lots of different um, places like retail parks and like McDonald's, Instavolt have a deal with McDonald's and Costa and KFC for the drive throughs but so far for some reason none in Canterbury just yet. So this is a real problem. Now the reason why I blame the council for this is the council obviously it's good that they put in those e-taxi those, uh, e chargers but there's no reason why we couldn't have loads and loads of other chargers. There's no reason at all, because all they've got to do with the council is they've got to find a bit of land and they've got to rent it to Osprey or Instavolt and probably other charge networks as well. They would be biting the council's hand off to get chargers in, a mini hub, a massive hub. They wouldn't care. The money is flowing all over the place. The amount of money, the amount of infrastructure money is enormous but charge networks can't find the places to put them. The councils they have a lot of land available in car parks and things and if they agree to and this is the only like caveat I suppose they have to agree to a pretty lengthy lease um, so like over 10 years they have to agree for the charge network to be there otherwise it's not worth the charge network spending the money right so they need to agree to a lengthy lease and then charge networks do everything for free 
grid connection, all that sort of stuff. It costs hundreds of thousands to put in these, these things. The council don't have to pay any of that. Nothing at all. They just find the land and then they get rent. And of course, and I've said this in a previous video, years ago I did a video about it and nothing has changed in Canterbury. That's a frustrating thing. So I did a video about it and I said exactly this. These charge networks will put them in for free. This is why the offering from Instavolt and Osprey is so good. They put the charger in, you just have to find a place to put them. So landowners all over the country, if you've got a bit of land, if you've got a car park or something, if you're in a farm shop or something like that, talk to Instavolt or Osprey. And um, if it's a suitable site, so in other words, if it gets enough traffic, then they'll put it in for free. So there's no reason why the council couldn't do that here. The, there's massive benefits for a start. Obviously with a lot of electric car drivers, they need to find places to rapid charge. So obviously for EV drivers, it's fantastic to have a charger, but it's also great for shops. The, the high street in, the in this country is failing because everyone buys stuff off Amazon. And um, if you want to encourage people to come into your town, especially after COVID, come into your town, spend some money, go to restaurants, all that, then stick a, a few chargers in, a few rapid chargers, even relatively slow ones like this is just a 50 kilowatt. 50 kilowatt chargers, I know we sniff at them a lot these days because like, my God, that's slow. But actually, arguably better to at least have a few of those than it would be like one 350 kilowatt charger, for instance. So anyway, my point is, councils can do something about it if they actually decided to. Now I do mention this, I mention this a lot on Twitter, I moan about it a lot to Canterbury Council. And the, the kind of answer I get is that, well, they're accountable to the public who pay the council tax, of course, and they can't, they call it disposing of land, they can't dispose of land without a good reason for it. I think the public aren't, aren't going to care too much. All the public really care about is if the city is clean and if the toilets work and if it's going to cost them any money, if they're spending any money on, on crap they don't need. Um, if the council can say, well, it doesn't cost any money f for this infrastructure, and it's going to be a massive benefit to people that don't have an EV yet and would like one and don't have off-street parking, there's an awful lot of people like that in that situation, of course, who would like to go to just a rapid, they would like to go to a rapid charger. If, if there was a, a hub here, a little hub, set up by Osprey or Instavolt, nice bunch of units there, and you knew that you'd go there and you would find a charger, then so many more people would get an EV. But they won't if they have to rely on one pretty crap charger at Morrison's that's generally busy or it's not working. That's no good, is it? I mean, how, how are you supposed to uh, get people to get EVs if that's the only option? AC chargers. There are a lot of AC chargers, as I said, in Canterbury. That's great, but you've got to pay for the parking on top of the charging. And something like this is great because it's in a free car park. So the council could find bits of land, park up, charge, people spend money. EV drivers, quite often, they've got a bit of cash. So they're perfect people to have going into your town and, and shopping. So it's a really frustrating situation. And the ridiculous thing is that nothing has changed in the years that I've, bought, I've had an EV. Because I wanted to get an EV before... What, what? Yeah, before I got the Nero, before I got the Leaf originally, I wanted to get an EV, but I didn't have a driveway. I lived in a house that had no drive. And at that point, I think this charger was there. And that was, what, five years ago now? Four or five years? And nothing has changed. We all want EVs to work, but we can't be too, uh, we can't be too smug driving around thinking, why isn't everyone driving an EV, when they, a lot of people don't feel comfortable with the infrastructure. And who can blame them? Because if, if I didn't have a driveway, um, well, I mean, I'm miles, up the, I'm, I'm miles up the road. I'm not even in the centre of Canterbury anymore. And if I didn't have a driveway, then uh, charging would be a nightmare. I, did, I just wouldn't be able to do it. And this is the nearest rapid to me, right? So I'd have to come here and just um, hope that it was available. I could stick a taxi sign onto the top of my car and then I could, you know, arguably charge in the taxi bit. Now, all of this is a postcode lottery. It depends where you are in the country. If you're in Bristol, for instance, then you've got way more, like charging infrastructure there is, is very good. Milton Keynes is, is like um, paradise, really, for electric cars. Tell your council it costs them nothing. It's good for public relations. It's great marketing, isn't it, for a council to be able to say they've got a new charging hub. And this brings me on to Oxford. They've got a park and ride in Oxford. 
and they've just done the most amazing facility there. And I was invited there, actually I was ill, so I couldn't go, and it's just really frustrating. But Fastnet are a fantastic charge network. I've done a video about them in the past, and they've put high power chargers there. Tesla have put loads of superchargers there, and there's also masses of AC chargers, the kind of slow ones that you'd be at all day. So this is at the Park and Ride in Oxford. You can go there, and depending on what your situation is, if you're Tesla, go to the superchargers. If you've got any other car and you just want to get in there quick and charge and go, you've got these 350 kilowatt fasten chargers. They're fantastic. They're wonderful, reliable chargers, really quick, and contactless payments, of course, which is good. And if you're going to be there all day um, using the park, park and ride as it should be used, of course, then you can park up and plug into the AC charger and you can be there for as long as you need to. We've got a park and ride here in Canterbury. I'm looking at it right opposite here. And it's completely underused. And, you know, the council know it's underused. There's a massive amount of space over there, directly opposite this retail park where I'm sat now. They could do a deal with Fastned, Instavolt, Osprey, and put in a wonderful charging hub. And this, as I say, the same is true for so many councils across the country that it's frustrating. So councils, I know you're, I know you're strapped for cash. I've heard it a million times that you don't have enough cash, so that's fine. But find a bit of land, Give it to a charge network, Instavolt, Osprey, Fastnet, whoever, and they will put in the charges for free. Your residents will be happy. You'll get better air in your city, for God's sake, because more EV drivers will crop up because they've got somewhere to charge finally. You, it'll improve tourism. Retail will improve in your, in your city because you've got these rich EV drivers parking up and wanting to use your facilities. It's a win-win-win-win-win situation. And it's idiotic not to do it. I'm going to leave it there. Um, I would love to know what the charging provision is like in your city. Loads of people I know don't even have a driveway and still manage to get by. So it is possible. I don't want to say it's not, but it does depend on the infrastructure you've got in your city. And uh, yeah, if we, want to, if we want all of us to go electric, I do think it's up to councils as well as other you know, private businesses as well to, um, to get this sorted. It's low-hanging fruit, is what I would call it. It's just such a no-brainer for the councils. So, pass this video along to them and um, give them a friendly nudge. Thanks so much for watching, and please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other far less ranty videos. Bye for now.